Hey traders, David Frost, my strategic forecast. You're here for another episode of Common Sense Market Analysis. Today is Wednesday, August 8, 2023. We're looking at a daily chart of the SPY or Spider, which is the proxy for the S&P 500. What do we have on the docket today? Today, from an intraday perspective, was a tough day. We'll get to that later. But there's a reason I bring it up in the forefront because when the market acts, we'll use the word abnormal. And when I use that word, we know the market does what it wants, when it wants. However, the market does the same stuff over and over and over again. We use the 80-20 rule. 80% of the time, it repeats the same exercise over and over again. 20% of the time, it does something different. We call it the duck theory. It walks like a duck, quacks like a duck. It's generally a duck. 20% of the time, it's the ugly duck. The big picture is the market has turned as of a couple of weeks ago. It's in the midst of a pullback operation. The tape is different. Not every dip is bought. Buy the dip crowd is on the sidelines from time to time. Until that point in which Mrs. Market reaches a number on the downside that is an objective a destination where the pullback will result in a nice pop higher, a nice rally leg higher. Whether or not that makes new highs at the time, we don't have to worry about that right now. What we're talking about is the fact that the market is doing the same thing over and over and over again. It goes up and it pulls back. It goes up, pulls back. It goes up and it pulls back. It goes up and and it's in the midst of a pullback, and just because we're below the 20-period moving average on the daily chart doesn't necessarily mean the market is in an all-time rollover situation. On the weekly chart, we're still in an uptrending situation. So let's pick out a couple of places and then retranslate them over to the daily chart. Where's this thing going on the downside? We discussed a couple of prices. We have 444. Where's that? It's a breakout area. We'll get back to that on the daily chart in a moment. Let's take this weekly chart breakup candle low 437.59 as a place. Doesn't mean the market's getting there anytime soon. It's a place. We're going to work backwards from there. We'll call that an important place certainly from a weekly chart perspective. You go back over to the daily chart and you'll notice there's still a lot of space in between current price and 437.59. What are the things in between? Well, let's bring out the thing we talked about probably a dozen times already. This high here is 443.90. We're gonna call it 444 for argument's sake. And then right below that, there's a gap left open that's also an important place, and I'm going to explain further in a moment. Let's get this gap on the board, 442.46. And of course, we have the daily chart 50-period moving average right below. So let's just use this as an example. They're going to fill the daily gap. We're projecting a little bit. They're filling the daily gap on some day, whether it's this week, whether it's next week, whether it's any point in time, they're filling the gap. They spike through the gap intraday. It looks like a bad situation. Where are they going? We don't know exactly where that 50 period moving average will be on that day because it will move each and every day. But let's just assume for the purposes of conversation, it's where it is or slightly a little bit higher than it is right now. You spike through the gap. You hit the 50 period moving average, maybe spike the 50 a little bit. That's going to be garden variety of chart support. Doesn't have to happen at the minute they do it, but from an intraday perspective, daily chart perspective, in and around there, whether it's same day or next day, they're generally going to get a bounce around that 50 period moving average. Now, if they creep into it, not the same. If they come into it from afar, that's a good deal. That's a better deal. If they hover over it for a few days, that takes everything I said off the table. We'll have to go lower. Now, let's project out a little bit more. Let's just say for argument's sake, they're running a test of the daily chart 50 period moving average. Forget those lines. They're spiking through the 50 period moving average. Let's say they're heading toward the big fat round number of 440. 
We put it at 440 and a quarter. Sometimes they come up short. Other times they spike them through. We're using 440 and a quarter for the purposes of this conversation. There's a method to the madness. Stay with me for a moment. What are we going to say when we get over to the weekly chart in the evening review like this one? We're going to say, hey, they're running a test in the vicinity of that breakup candle low on the weekly chart. Sometimes they come up short. Other times they spike them through. You have to put this in perspective. I understand 440 to 437 and change is around 30 S&P handles. I get that. But when you look at a weekly chart, that's not that big of a deal. Intraday looks like pandemonium. Weekly chart, it's a blip. So you could see why somewhere in the neighborhood of 440, above 440, down to 437 and change is going to be, if reached, bona fide chart support put that on a sticky note it's how we deduce the area deduce word of the day let's not lose sight of this from a bigger picture perspective monthly chart on time type of situation last month or this month depending on how you want to look at it we were looking for a turn market goes both ways looking for a turn on one hand looking for a bounce after the turn on another hand what about inside the numbers Today was a little bit different than the norm. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to let you read the notes. You can go back to the chart and double check the work, but I'm going to tell you in advance what you're going to find. You're going to find today yours truly was wrong. We look at the good, the bad, and the ugly. Sometimes they get emails. Hey, how come you never show bad trades? Yes, I do. Today was one of those days where I was wrong in my numbers. I was wrong with a couple of stocks on the move numbers. And I was wrong in the S&P in the morning session. Now, we figured it out. We got the thing narrowed down. Obviously, we can adjust in real time. When I say we, I'm talking about inside the numbers, inside the numbers live room. We talk through it. We have additional numbers. We wiggle out of positions. We end up buying another number. We get profit out of it. Some traders, yeah, they took a hit today. Other traders had a nice day from a profit standpoint. We think better in pictures. So here's basically what happened from an intraday perspective. So early on, the market was doing some things that were deemed, at least from where I sat, as a bullish scenario for higher prices, pre-market stuff, yada, yada. And the net net was right around here, around 447.70, up in this neck of the woods right here, is where things went pretty bad from where I sat. So I was expecting a bounce in this area. I was expecting a rally from here. Traders were getting long down here. Of course, there was another number, but they kept going lower. And the original concept from the trade perspective was wrong. I was wrong. It's one thing in the trading business. You have to be able to accept when you're wrong, adjust in real time accordingly, not going to be right in every trade. Traders in the room, traders inside the numbers, they know that. I say it all the time. I remind them all the time. We're going to have losses. There's going to be a day where I just don't have it. Today was a good example of that day, at least in the morning session. We had numbers later on, and they did some crazy stuff, and we're going to go over that in a moment. We certainly had some traders buy down here. We certainly had some traders buying down here. We had traders buying them down. We had traders that averaged down, got out of it with even. They got out of it with a profit. We had traders that were not in it, that bought it down here. They got a nice profit. There was something for everybody, unfortunately, today, and I'll say it for the last time. It just wasn't my day. I didn't have the cadence of the market, and you have to know when to accept that. I'm taking the bullet. So here's one of the things we discussed in the live room, and I think this is important because it was a learning opportunity. Once they spiked the former low, found some semblance of support, and started trying to get back up, we talked about some resistance areas along the way, but I said one thing. I said, you see this hourly chart, big time breakdown candle? That was a hint. They're telling you something there, and if they can recapture that candle, and it had a high of 448.66, if they can recapture it, they're going to start to rally, and that's going to be the beginning of another leg higher. What they did in the afternoon was they went to run a test, and they failed there again. So that tells you, tells me, tells everybody, reconfirms that was an important spot. What we also know and how we took advantage of that in the live room, traders that were long from lower or long from averaging in, they knew where the exits were. We talked about them ad nauseum. Where could the market get to? Here's the place. 
If they get above here, it's a whole different can of worms, but this is going to be overhead resistance. That was the area they collapsed this morning. They broke down. So what did they do? They rallied back to run a test of what? You got it. The breakdown area. They don't all look the same, but they're all the same. It's where the market made the move. That's where the market made the move this morning. All of a sudden, she just collapsed. Now, it happens, certainly. But what didn't happen were certain support areas for at minimum of a bounce opportunity, a tradable bounce. Didn't happen along the way. That was the oddity. That was the 20% camp of the 80-20 rule. It is what it is. Upstart holdings. Stock on the move today. I didn't show you the list, but I'm showing you the stocks. I'm not going to skip everything. Good, the bad, and the ugly. Totally wrong. Blew through my numbers. Now, you look at a short-term chart, and you see what happened at the third number. They gave you a bounce, but when you look at the big picture, the stock was on a downtrend. It didn't really stop, but at the third number for about 15 minutes. DraftKings was more on the normal side today. Opened below the first two, ripped it up, bounced off the third. Not the ideal the manner in which, but you could see how the numbers were really a support zone today for sure. Roblox opened below the first, below the second, ripped through the third. In the room, we had another identified number that came way late in the day. However, guess what? It was just wrong. We move on. Doesn't happen very often. But mama said there'd be days like this. I have them, you have them, your neighbor has them, your cousin's brother has them. Camp IWM. Tried to reverse yesterday a little bit. Not so much. Didn't make a new low today, but no follow through. That's important. You need follow through. So technically speaking, they have to get above yesterday's high in order to get anything going, even to discuss another back test to the 20 period moving average. They could just go sideways for another couple of days, at which point the 50 period moving average will come into view. You have this pivot high over here right above it. Call that 189 and change. Figure they'll get to that, spike it through, hit the 50 period moving average. Similar conversation that we had with the spiders before. Last night, we looked at the 100 period moving average on the weekly chart. We talked about it. Same routine. You don't know where they're going to finish the week, so we just monitor it each day. Finish above it. That's okay for the week. Finish below it. It's probably a warning sign shot across the bow. Monthly chart, and we've talked about this one many times. While you're above all the moving averages, you still have this bearish wedgish thing going on after this move down. So this is not really in an uptrend, even though you're above all the moving averages. Technically, you're above the moving averages. However, you're nowhere near the type of recovery you've seen in the S&P 500. You're nowhere near the same type of chart in the Qs. Longer, bigger picture is this is bearish pattern, not a bullish pattern. Camp IWM. Folks down at the Transportation Department, Secretary Buttigieg flirting with yesterday's lows. As long as they're below the 20 period moving average, there's lower prices in the hopper. Here's your breakout area. Below that, the door's going to open for this breakup candle low. And then below that, it opens for the gap. The gap is officially at, let's call it, 15,825. Weekly chart, you give up the last breakup candle low in the sequence, and you have to go to the next one. Down here, the low is 15,709. So that's even below that gap we just discussed. Spike the gap, run a test of the next breakup candle low in the sequence if they're down in that neck of the woods. Don't have to get it to the penny, just in the ballpark in the neighborhood. It's a plus or minus when we're talking about these big time frame charts, weekly chart, break up candle low. Sometimes they come up short, other times they spike them through. So we use the neighborhood concept. Be neighborly. Just to bring something right back, 15,888 and change, Little Caesars is also in the ballpark. This is a breakout area. So the market ran up to here, was rejected. Ran up to there again, busted through, coming back to retest the former breakout area. They stay above, it's bullish. If they come back below, other stuff is happening. And what that represents is that same area represents getting into the quote-unquote ballpark of the next breakup candle low in the sequence on the weekly chart. So we're just going through the exercise using the chart as a learning or teaching opportunity. 
What about the Q people? 366.35, it's a number we discussed. We discussed in a live room, talked about it in here. It's an important place, yet they didn't hit it today. Now, all of a sudden, they came close today. What happens tomorrow if they're down again? Is tomorrow the same as today coming from where they came from? Well, they edged into it from coming up somewhat short yesterday. Two days coming up short, can't do it. My inclination after seeing that for a couple of days is there's probably a lower price. What's the lower price? If they bust through, the next big time number I have, and you might want to put this on a sticky note, is 362, and therein lies what would normally be normal garden variety support zone for a bounce back in the other direction. Spike it through a little bit is okay, but this is a zone of support where you should see the market, try and hold it, try and bounce, find support. They're all synonymous with each other. Put that one on a sticky note. XLF, below the 20 period moving average, eating time off the clock. They can't really get going. They're failing at the 20. You have some unfinished business down here below this breakup candle low. You have some moving averages. Weekly chart, not yet. They're still eating time off the clock underneath the 100 period moving average. Coming down to run a test. We just went over this same routine, different chart. All charts act and react the same way. Makes no difference what the three letters on the screen are. Makes no difference what the symbol is. What do you have? Weekly chart, breakup candle low, 34.21. You mark it off on the chart. You go back to the daily to get the same look. It's the same thing we just talked about. And guess what? They spike through that, fill the gap. These moving averages will be in the same general ballpark if this happens anytime soon. Come into these moving averages, get a bounce back in the other direction. That's the way the market works the majority of the time. Smash mouth leaking down now below its 50 period moving average on the daily chart, coming into an important number, 148.90. Intraday should give you a bounce. If they blow through it, I have other numbers. Ask me about it in the live room. I'll give it to you on Thursday. For those of you wondering, it smells like 145.45. And this is the way this one works. If they hit 148.90, this is your bogey. This low here, if they give up that low, 147.16, they're either going to hit this and bounce it, spike it and bounce it. They can spike it all the way down intraday to 147.16, get below that. And this number, 145.45, give or take, is going to come into view. That's the way that one works. It's sticky note worthy. If I told you how much I appreciate each and every one of you, without you, these videos are not possible. That is true and accurate information. We're pulling the ripcord here today. I'm David Frost, my strategic forecast. Thanks again for tuning in to another episode of Common Sense Market Analysis.